they will probably all go for the buddlier and then we'll shoo them out. Come on, you gremlins, come on. <laughs> it starts to rain, they're at the gate screaming to be let back in. They've got me well trained. <laughs> Well, they obviously own you. Yeah, <laughs> feel like a surf. They've really bought, um, they've bought a routine to the farmyard that's really good for the yard and really good for my mental health. Mm. And they eat the weeds. Look, you can see I haven't got a thistle in this field. It's perfect. <laughs> so yeah, we came back from living abroad, came back, moved to North Wales and slowly bit by bit we've taken fields back in hand from our tenants and started farming it ourselves, farming regeneratively and working with nature. So we started grazing the first field, we just did four acres, just, well that was all I took back in hand that year um, that, that needed re-sowing um, and just to see how it would work with the herbal lay and it was amazing stuff and at first the sheep wouldn't touch the chicory and I was like oh it's true what people say and then come the end of summer they really tucked into it they went mad for it and yeah I've only just had to dose for worms for the first time in a year at the back end of this summer it sounds a bit cheesy but I've got this thing where I say there's the two parts of the farm that you can't see when we're walking around it and one of those is my customers and the other is the livestock under our feet. I know this might sound soft but when you're walking around barren fields in winter and you can see drowned worms on the surface it's just this isn't right this isn't sustainable long term this is not we don't have the right to do that so um, now knowing that the soil is getting healthier and all the microbes and everything that lives in that soil food web is benefiting from it is awesome. And we don't use any chemical fertilizers, hence the chickens. This is my weightlifting in the morning. It's brilliant, they, um, they just love the grass. Like eating the grass and then the food that they've got is um, organic uh, layer pellets and uh, that's kind of there as a reserve. They don't go to it straight must, away. Yeah, and that, that must last a long time. Yeah, the chickens that I've got, like the pet ones on the yard, they go through their layer pellets like they're sweets. Yeah. We've done a lot of riparian work here um, on the edge of this field we've concentrated this year because um, where it had been farmed um, conventionally it was ploughed up to the edge and then every time we had the flash floods in winter it would eat away underneath and the top would drop in so we've in five years we've lost so many metres of field edge and I can't afford to buy so many metres of land or soil to grow on, so it just made sense to, um, to do the riparian works just to save our field. It was a bit different what we did. We coppiced the willow and alder in the next door uh, field, so that will regrow. And then we scraped the bank back to 30 degrees and we buried the trees like whole trees um, where we'd coppice them into in the soil. The idea is that then that tree trunk becomes the root ball for the suckers that it sends up and it's worked amazingly. And then we've got all this regen um, and it didn't get sown and all that clover's just there. It's just come up naturally. So that's great for putting nitrogen back in the soil and then we've got you know such a diverse species uh, range of species already and then like yeah around the corner there you see the tree guards that yes. we haven't got half the ground cover come up on that bank so I really think that like there must be so much nutrients in these tree in the bark and everything that's under the soil just feeding everything because yeah it's almost it's embarrassing it's a bit bare there. It's almost like nature's trying to solve some of its own problems, isn't it? And then 
conventional farming is trying to stop that, um, to my mind. It costs a lot of money to try and fight nature. We have a mink raft and we set it here. We have put it out on the water in the shallows, but it actually works better if it's just on the rocks. Um, and we've got a few spots um, up and down where we use it. And um, I use an egg as bait. I don't know, I'm sure I could be doing the job better, but I'm just glad I'm doing the job. You can tell when they're around because you can hear all the ducks and the wrens and everything just squawking their heads off. And it even, oh, and the kingfisher, you hear them screeching as well. And it's like, um, in the night you hear it, so then I know the next day I need to go out and move the raft to where I heard the noises, which part of the riverbank the noise was coming from. And then within a week, you've caught, caught, yeah, caught it. But I was a bit, I wasn't really on it um, enough this summer, really, um, with everything going on. Um, but yeah, glad I got four. There's a guy down the river from us and he's caught 50 odds this year, yeah. I would love to be able to like find find a, a grant that would help me um, renovate it into an outdoor classroom. Then it would be amazing to welcome kids here and I don't think it's going to be a bad thing for them to reconnect with nature, learn a bit about our woodlands that we're surrounded by, um, living with the river. It would be great to do something with them on clean water and yeah and on where the food comes from and the farming side of things. But even if we could do something showing green energy use as well with the stream or with the river sat there it could, you know it could really spark some imagination you don't know what seed you could plant in someone young and yeah i just think it would be a really awesome opportunity i can't walk past poo these days without looking for an indicator that things are all right <laughs> Some people look on the spreadsheet to see if uh, things are all right, and I'm looking in the muck. If you either met your um, your animals or worm your animals, you're also um, doing that with all your insects as well that rely on the muck. Now seeing it covered and deep in lush herbal lays, which are helping the health of the livestock. It was full of pollinators. Um, hoverflies were just mad here, the bees. It's really rewarding and you kind of feel like, well, we might, yeah, we're doing something, right?